And so what I wanted to cover uh, today was uh, a few items out of uh, Revit and Navis Works Manage. I'll be using uh, 2021 for both these software in here today. So um, a couple of the items that I wanted to start off with uh, within Revit is um, rotation and slanting of items. So with that, you can actually take a wall now within your Revit environment and actually slant it without having to create a uh, slanted or slope style wall. Uh, so when you grab your walls, you can actually go up to your properties dialog box and down under constraints, you're actually going to see this area called cross section and it's by default set to vertical. Now, when you switch this to say slanted here, you're also going to see where there is an angle from that vertical and this allows you to put an angle for that wall. And so if I go look at this in a 3D view now, we actually do have slope that we do have as part of that wall. So along with that, if you need to change that degree, let's say it was the 25 degree or whatever it might be, notice how everything is staying connected. And also we do notice that we see windows that are creating openings in this slanted wall. Now, in order to keep the objects associated to the host, whatever that sloped angle might be, we actually have to grab those elements separately. And then from the properties palette, we'll see orientation for those components. Now notice it says vertical, but if we do change that to sloped, it does follow the plane of that slope direction there that we do see. So it's just one of the items that I did want to show there with that. And also this does work on a curved wall as well. So if I grab our curved wall here that we do see, we can then change that from vertical to slanted, give that a particular degree for that angle and now we can see that that particular wall, even though it's curved, is at a slant. And so now all we have to do is just grab these particular items, make sure they are also slanted as well, if you did want them to follow that same slant plane there. Make sure that, that is set for all of those particular items and we can see how that adjusts and keeps the orientation of those objects together. So it's just a new way to be able to modify your walls uh, and to be able to uh, create that uh, custom slant to those walls as well. Another item that I wanted to uh, go through uh, is our annotation. And typically annotation does not follow your objects. Now, what you can do though, is you can see here that our door tag, as well as our wall tag, you know, maybe even a window tag that we see, they're still running readable. They're not following the direction of the object that it is uh, associated to. So if we were to open the edit family for those particular objects and uh, for these tags. And notice you don't have to select the label, you don't have to select any of the line work, but over in your properties for that family, you're going to see this parameter it says rotate with component. And sometimes this really uh, drives people insane where, you know, hey, I want my tags to follow the direction. Well, all we have to do is make sure that this checkbox is selected. We go up, select load into project, make sure it's in the particular file that you're loading it back into. And I always like using the second option that overwrites the version and its parameters. And what that does, it'll do that for all of those items then. Now we can see that the rotation of that tag 
is following the direction of that particular window. So even if you move it, it's still staying along with that plane area of the object, how it's placed into its host. And we can sit there and do that with this door tag as well. So it's simply just grabbing your annotation tag, edit family. Of course, if it needs updated, it'll update. But here within our properties, this is where we're going to select rotate with component. Make sure we select load in project. Of course, you can do, you know, load and close as well. Hit OK. There's that second option, override with the version and the parameters. And now that door tag follows that door. So that way it's readable, but it's also following the object. And you can see how that updated here as well. So it's just a little bit on the annotation side of Revit to how to get your tags to follow your objects just a little bit closer. So the, one of the last items within Revit that I wanted to show is the MEP settings for angles. Now, typically when you're running like your conduit, your cable tray, your uh, duct, your piping, Revit wants to automatically just start drawing any kind of given angle on these items all of the time. And so now if you can see, I'm drawing in, there's a 45 there, but if I move it at a 59 degree angle and grab this elbow here, I'm gonna stretch out the properties here so we can see this just a little bit better, is now, we look at the angle, and it's 59 degrees. Well, typically in projects, we're not going to have that. And we'd like to be able to set this where it's automatically going to force it to certain angles or certain sizes. Uh, and we can do that within our MEP settings. So if you go into your Systems tab within Revit, and right below HVAC, your mechanical equipment, piping and plumbing, and electrical, you're going to see these little drop-down arrows. And these go into either the mechanical settings, which includes piping, and or your electrical settings. And so if we go into our mechanical settings first, now let's look at our duct and our pipe angles. And notice how it says use any given angle right off the bat. That's how rough it is, default out of the box. So if you want to set an angle, anchor, an angle increment, you can do that. <clears throat> and you can do that by whatever degree you want, or use this last option here for specific angles. So now if we want to force everything to be a 45 or 90, we've only got those two options on there. We could do that back here with our pipes as well and go into our electrical and do the same. But now if I grab that same piece of duct here and I try to put in something that's not a 45, let's say this 70, it's not going to want to um, place that in there. So even if I come up here and let's say, let's put in a 20 degree angle. Well, just depending on what angle increments that you select, now see how it's forcing it to a 45. So zero to 45 is gonna be a 45, 90, or whatever those particular settings are that you had selected there. So we do have the capability to go ahead and predefine those angles and it helps not only in your design process, but also the speed of how you're doing things. That way you don't have to go back and change those particular items out. Now, one little thing is, if you've already started designing before you changed out any of these MEP settings for your angles, you will have to go back and change those existing ones that already existed in your project prior to those changes. So this is also something good that you could have set up within your title, uh, your template as well. All right, so I'm going to move on to Navisworks uh, here. And with Navisworks, I've got a couple of things that I wanted to cover is uh, one, creating selection sets and utilizing the selection sets for many different things like your clashes or uh, finding items or what 
whatever it might be, using it with your time liner uh, throughout uh, manage to for your simulation things. Um, and then our the last item I'll be covering is our section box. So with that, um, you know, you've got all of your models brought into your selection tree here. And let's say we want to start, you know, just gathering components. Well, if we do open up that selection tree, things get really crazy after you start expanding everything. Well, it is, if you're using the same naming nomenclature or, or sizing or things of that nature, it's really easy to help pick up those particular items. And you don't have to expand each one of these trees for those files out. You can actually come up to your select and search under your home tab and you can pick same name here. Now, what that does, you can see all of those pieces of duct that highlighted. Now, I did not grab any of the fittings, I just grabbed duct. But that's something where you, we can pick duct fittings as well, hit that with that same name and notice how it's starting to pick all of those components. Now, when you're done with that selection, let's just say I wanted to call this my mechanical, you know, my first floor, second floor, maybe it's the entire model. Here's where we can come up and select save selection. Now, what that is going to do is allow us to be able to um, group these items and makes it a lot faster when you're selecting, gathering information like properties or using for other items like clashes. So I'll just put my project uh, duct and fittings here. So with this, yes, we could have went to that selection tree and said only everything by level one or level one and level two. So we could just minimize, you know, where these items are also located if need be. So now I've got this project uh, duct and fittings here. And anytime you select that, notice how we can get that to be highlighted for those particular items. Now you can also come in here and add your comments and things of that nature, but we also have it where we can uh, pick certain items. So let's say if you had already uh, sets used in another project, you can reuse those over and add new items from additional linked files if need be. So here is, you know, let's go back to our tree here. And let's go take a look at, you know, maybe um, these walls. So I want to select all of those same type or name, just depending on whatever your selection method is for grabbing those items. And let's just pick project walls here for our name. So once that is set, now if you wanted to run a quick clash detective or collision detection, we could come up here, add a brand new one. And instead of breaking apart our files like we typically could within the project, here where it says standard under selection A and B, this is where we're going to pick sets. And so now we can run these sets against each other. Of course, we have other additional tools. But as soon as we hit that, now we've got our clashes based off those fittings for the um, ductwork, the fittings, and also the walls. So we can see here as we move across through here where those particular items are located. So you can also export this out, but you can also use it for timeliner down the road, see how you can use the selection sets for those particular items in there. So it's a lot of flexibility and additional uh, features that you can use for those particular tools. All right, so one last thing is uh, to be able to uh, use your uh, section box. And I always find it easier to use the section tool if you, when you turn this on, so enable sectioning under your viewpoint menu there in the ribbon and by default, typically it's always set to plane. Now, 
course we'd have to go through figure out which planes to turn on which is top which is you know front back and it gets a little cumbersome to use this tool and that's why here where it says planes under mode i will switch this to box now to me box is a little bit easier to use and it's more like other um, you know design and viewing based uh, cad tools where we can come in we can move this so if i need to move throughout the project i can move grab and move that box anywhere i can rotate that box around if need be and then also we can scale it very easily so i can pick you know what we want where we want move that up and down and it's just a lot easier to grab that information and you can also hit fit selection as well there as we see so this just allows you to be able to view the entire model or just one part of it as needed. And so this just a uh, few of the tips and tricks that I'd like to uh, show and hope everybody got something out of here with uh, Revit and Navisworks. Thank you.